I've just found something really, really interesting on the NHS's website, and this ties in directly with that NHS Palantir contract. So this was published on the 11th of October, but I have not seen it spoken about yet, and nor have I come across it. And it's ve- I was looking at it last night, and it's very, very interesting. It sort of sprinkles some information and puts some hints about Palantir in there, about how you know it addresses some of the concerns people are having over this contract. And I think that you're going to find it very interesting. So let's just start working through it. So the first question is, what is the FDP? FDP is a software that will sit across the NHS trust and integrated care systems, allowing them to connect all the data they already hold in a safe and secure environment. GP data will not be part of the national platform. That surprised me. I won't lie. I did assume that the GP data would also be integrated into this FDP. Looks like that won't be the case. The software will be federated across the NHS. This means that every hospital and integrated care board will have their own version of the platform, which can connect and collaborate with all the other platforms as a federation. So it's connecting all the data into what Palantir does, one centralized source of truth. This makes it easier for health and care organizations to work together, compare data, analyze it at different geographic, demographic, and organizational levels, share it and spread new effective digital solutions. This one is really key because this is actually on the NHS website. To paint a picture, there has been a lot of media articles that basically paint the picture of Palantir being this really, really toxic spy US company that is only going to steal and spy on your data. I've addressed this in a recent video, but it's nice to see the NHS address this directly. The federated data platform is not data collection. So they are not collecting data to then do bad things with. It is simply software that will help connect all the disjointed data that we have, bring them all together and make a more effective care system. Anyone that follows Palantir and invests in Palantir will already know that, but there is definitely concern. So why do we need this? As I read through this, think about what you already know about Palantir, what they're already doing with the healthcare system and how effective and helpful they would be here. So the NHS is made up of multiple organizations that use data every single day to manage patient care and plan services. Historically, it's been held in different systems that do not speak to each other, creating burden for staff and delays to patient care, difficult to work at scale and share information. If you're in the UK, you will already know that even moving locations and having to sign up to a new area is a nightmare. It takes ages. You have to repeat everything. Sharing information across hospitals is a problem. They just don't seem ha- seem to have access to it. It get, gets lost in the system. Better use of data brings big benefits for patients by ensuring more joined up care, greater choice and improved health outcomes, ultimately saving lives. Whether or not Palantir get this contract, we already know that the impact that they have is real. Whether it's on the front line in a defense sector, literally on the battlefield, whether it's in a business and it's improving the revenues of that business, or it's in the healthcare sector, which they're particularly good at improving efficiencies with. We've we've seen this with lots and lots of different examples now, saving lives. Feedback from patients has shown that we need to make it easier for staff to access the information they need freeing up time to invest in delivering the best possible care for patients and facilitating the rollouts of innovation taking place across healthcare systems. Palantir is all about saving businesses time and money. And it sounds like they can do that for the NHS. The federated data platform, and remember, this isn't necessarily about Palantir, it's talking about the federated data platform that Palantir are looking to do for the NHS. The federated data platform will provide software to link all these NHS trusts and regional systems, giving us a consistent technical means of linking data that is already collected for patient care. Clinicians will easily have access to the information they need to do their job in one place, freeing up time spent on admin tasks and enabling them to deliver the most appropriate care. Again, GP data will not be part of the national platform. I wonder why that is. If you know the answer to that question, let me know. Okay, what is being procured and what is the process? So to give you some context on this one, you should know that there's been a lot of speak about how the procurement of um, a provider, a supplier, Palantir being one of the front runners for this, for this big 480 million multi-year contract is not being done very openly and very fairly because they believe that Palantir is the clear front runner. They've already given them other contracts, etc., etc. Again, it's all media noise. They've said here, 
We are procuring a combination of technology and services to connect and protect data, enabling innovation to be scaled across the NHS. We know why that's important, we've just heard. NHS England is conducting a fair and open transparent procurement in line with the regulations. There is no front runner. The process is to open for any suppliers to participate subject to passing the standard selection criteria and minimum requirements. So they've said themselves there is no such thing as a front runner here. There is probably such thing as someone that stands out because of previous uh, examples, previous efficiencies that they've managed to get for the NHS, what else they've been doing in the healthcare sector, what other government organisations in the UK they've been working with. I've spoken about all of this in previous videos. Go and watch them if you have no idea what I'm talking about. All bids are evaluated against the same criteria. Now, I hope this is really the case because one thing that us Palantir investors have been a bit concerned about is this idea that the NHS general public are so worried about Palantir being awarded the contract that, you know, they're speaking out, they're signing um, protests, campaigns, sorry, and it's all getting quite political. People are saying that it should be awarded to a British company, which is one of the other front runners. I just hope that they really do stick to this, keeping it fair and just evaluating them on who the best person is for the job. If that's the case, I believe Palantir will win. Uh, independent evaluators have been selected, etc., etc. Clearly defined the um, FDPAS requirements. Okay, okay. The value of the procurement has not changed require a maximum value of any contract that is advertised, which has been estimated 480 million over seven years, which equates to the cost of 300,000 per NHS organization per year for seven years. FDPAS is not a like-for-like -like replace, this is really important actually, is not a like-for-like -like replacement of the contract that the NHS England currently has with Palantir for its provision of foundry. So they are trying to basically say that the previous contract that Palantir had with the NHS is not a like-for-like -like replacement, so it shouldn't give them any leg up. However, they've already worked with Palantir. They know exactly what Palantir can do. They've built those relationships. So I think that it will definitely help and it will play into it. But obviously they're just saying here that it's not a like-for-like -like, uh, replacement. We have de deliver deliberately reassessed our data analytic requirements. Okay, okay. You can pause the screen and read all about this if you want to. I'm not going to read every single thing here. This talks about the step-by-step uh, -step process and then we're going to move on to this question. So what do we mean when we say data? NHS organizations hold different types of data. Operational information like the number of beds, percentages that are occupied, held in multiple systems. We know that, we know that that's the problem. And then they also have confidential patient information that identifies the patient, and it will include some things about the medical treatment and condition. The FDP will allow the NHS organization to access both of these types of data where lawfully appropriate and combine it with other data to analyze multiple data sources in one place. What information will be on this FDP? The new software will use data that the NHS already collects and uses. It will securely bring together information from patient health records, waiting lists, theaters, staff rosters to better manage healthcare. Who can see this data? This is important. Will only allow access to patient data for people who need to see it as part of their role in the NHS. As happens currently, there will be clear rules on who can have access, what they can see and what they can do. Remember that Palantir take data security incredibly seriously because of the work that they've done with the highest of confidentiality clients. For a long, long time, they worked in the government sector with the intelligence and defense areas. Because of that, because of the high confidentiality requirements, they weren't allowed to share what they do and they've had to build ways into their platforms that allow particular users to be restricted from seeing certain things, you can literally decide which users see what down to the rows and the columns within the data. They would be perfect for allowing this. They have many, many tools to, to do this. Only authorized users will be granted access to data for approved purposes. And it goes on to tell you who. Will new data be collected? No. What will the FDP do? I'm not gonna go uh, over this one. You can pause it and you can read we know this stuff, we know how useful they're going to be. And also just pointing out some things here, Palantir have already proven valuable with the vaccination during COVID. We know that they've proven very, very helpful with just seeing efficiencies in the NHS in terms of waiting times. Remember that Chelsea and Westminster Trust um, process study that they did? 
You know where they they did work with the uh, Chelsea and I think it's Westminster and they basically saw a lot of improvements there. I'll throw some statistics on the screen now. It's completely gone out of my mind, but you know the one I'm talking about. What are the benefits? Ah, here you go. I won't throw, I wouldn't have thrown anything because it's right here. For example, Chelsea and Westminster NHS Foundation Trust has used new software in its gynecology department to track patients with suspected cancer through to diagnosis and first treatment, which has reduced the waiting time for the first appointment by an average of two days and cut the overall time of diagnosis. This means two days less that the patient spent worrying, finding out what their next treatment will be. And then again here, they use software to monitor all admitted patients and access any potential barriers to discharge. This system has freed up almost 10 hours of clinician time each week, which is pretty big really, if you think about that across if that was scaled across the whole NHS and resulted in patients going home faster with long stays, so the over 21 day stays, falling by more than 36%. Again, massive, massive uh, improvements seen there. Goes on to explain more. You can stop it. You can read it. What is an example of how the FDP can help patient care? Again, won't read all of this. What will FDP be able to do more of in the future? The FDP will initially be focused on supporting the five key NHS priorities. So elective recovery, care coordination, vaccine and immun immunized vaccines, <laughs> population health management and supply chain management. How will patient data be used? This is the concern. No new data collected, existing data only. For example, uh, Chelsea and Westminster have used new software and it's, okay, that's just repeating what we've said. How will it be protected? The software will be more secure than anything that is currently used in the NHS. So people's concern with their data not being secure after this happens doesn't really make sense because the NHS themselves, who should care about your data more than anyone in this deal, has said it will be more secure than what they've had before. The NHS PET will be procured from, and you can read what that is just here, from a different supplier to the supplier of the FDP and will not go live. Okay, so they're taking the necessary steps, they're putting them in place to make sure that your data is safe. The use of data in the FTP will remain under full control and protection of the NHS. Patient data cannot, cannot be accessed by the company that makes the software. I think that is the number one most important thing from this Q&A. It cannot be accessed by the company, i.e. Palantir is the concern here, that makes the software. Palantir will not suddenly have access to your data nor will they be able to use it. Primarily, the data will remain within the organization where the patient receives their care, and there are strict access controls to make sure only people that need to see it see it. Can patients opt out of sharing their data with the FDP? No. Patients can only opt out of sharing their data for research and planning, not for direct patient care. So this platform, what they're doing, this deal with Palantir, if Palantir get it, is so crucial for patient care it will literally change patient care for the good, hopefully, way more efficient, way more people getting quicker appointments, not staying in hospital for as long, having more beds, beds available, supply chain issues, all of that. So they are saying that you cannot opt out of this, which I think is, is good. The FDP uses data for patient, direct patient care, such as booking, yeah. So if you opted out of this, you wouldn't have your name in the system, which means you wouldn't be able to get an appointment and everything. So makes complete sense. Can patients choose whether their information is accessed via the platform? The new software will be routinely used by NHS staff to provide care. Okay, similar thing. If the FDP itself is secure, why is there a need for secure data environments inside the FDP? I guess it's quite a good question if you don't know much about how Palantir work or any other company doing a similar thing. The FDP will only allow access to patient data for people who need to see it as part of their role. Right, this is the same in any company. You have data. Some of that data is confidential. Other people in the business just simply do not know about that. In the business that I work for, the HR department can see a lot more about different employees than I ever could. Why would I be able to go in and see where someone else lives, how much money they get, any problems that they've been having at work? Of course we wouldn't. And it's the same in this situation. Secure data environments, which are secure way of handling data, allow organizations to control who sees it, what they can do with it, etc., etc. Again, GP data not used. Will it increase the risk of a cyber attack? No. <laughs> so lots of these worries are being um, addressed here and you can see why that is. Learnings from other programs. Okay, you can pause that and read that here. This one, let's, let's just look at this because this is about Palantir. 
So how does this fit with Palantir's Foundry platform, which is currently being used? Palantir provides NHS England with data management platform services Foundry, which were procured to provide the national organizations responsible for coordinating the response to COVID with secure, reliable, and timely data in a way that protects the privacy of our citizens in order to make informed, effective decisions. We learned huge issues through our COVID-19 response and started to use data to work smarter, to anticipate the virus, protect the most vulnerable, put resources where they needed to be and deliver the largest vaccination program in the NHS history. So because of working with Palantir, they have realized how badly they were utilizing their data and how much they need to actually address this issue. I just don't understand why they would go with someone else when they've already made all of these ties to Palantir. Such efficient and effective responses were only possible because of the investment in digital systems. We now want to improve this. The investment in FDP will provide local health and care organizations with a technical architecture, architecture I was going to say, that enables them to make the most of their information they hold to transform care and imp improve, improve, <laughs> outcomes for patients. NHS England has recently awarded a 12-month transition contract, so that was a £25 million uh, deal, to Palantir to support the successful transition from the current Foundry platform to the new FDP. The Foundry platform was used during the COVID pandemic to support. More recently, it's also been used to test the viability number of pilots, a number of pilots for FDP. So they've used Palantir for the, for the COVID situation, then they've come back to Palantir to actually run pilots and they've also had them transfer the data. Why would they now move to someone else? They've built the relationship, they've seen the, the outcomes and then it talks about some of the actual pilot schemes that they've been doing and what's going on with them right now. Can patients access their own data? Again, subject access requests. You know, we, we have a lot of um, GDPR here, a lot of protection for people and their data. What are the penalties for organizations that misuse? If Palantir were ever found out to be unlawfully stealing data, which is really, I don't think the case at all, there are implications. I'll leave a link to that Q&A in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon.